you were lamenting the gig worker economy um, and that they're being exploited. I'm curious if you look at, you know, uh, being a, a ride sharing driver or delivering food as an entry level, you know, I'm going to work at 20 hours a week and make whatever, 12 to $20 an hour, depending on how busy it is. Do you have a problem with that? Or do you have a problem with it starts to tip over into full time, they should get benefits? Because it seems to me like these jobs have already existed and nobody complained about them. But if Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash become large companies, then all of a sudden it's like, well, this feels unfair. Well, it's just exploitation on an industrial scale. And I think there are many problems here. One problem is that no one is taking home after expenses 12 to 20 bucks an hour. There's been numerous studies on this. Basically, everything hinges on the fact that you convince gig workers to run down the assets that they have. You convince them to run down the asset like their car, defer maintenance, um, defer uh, depreciation, basically not dealing with any of the costs of actually providing the service. And so e even in the best of cases, or I don't even know if it's a best case, even in the case where someone just works 10 hours a week because they want to make some extra cash, is utterly exploitive. The fact that gig workers are not being paid for their expenses, the fact that they're not being paid while they're waiting between jobs. I saw one study just come out, was it last week, about the fact that uh, Uber and Lyft are majorly contributing to... Um, congestion in cities to, to traffic because 40% of the time spent working for these apps are spent without passengers in the car. And those 40% of that hours, they're not being paid for that hours. You're so like, if a freelancer though, I mean, you, you've worked with a lot of freelancers. If a freelancer is between writing blog posts or designing logos, uh, but they want that flexibility, shouldn't they be able to have it and be 1099? I, I think, th I think there- Or can only rich people a, be 1099? Sure. But I think there's just a material categorical difference between someone who's making uh, essentially no money after you account for expenses um, or whether that makes up for it or not. Everyone I've ever known who've done consulting in tech, mm -hmm. they don't charge like what a full-time worker would get paid per hour. They charge, what, three, five, ten times as much because they know that the job and the income is lumpy. So you might yeah. have a great contract here for, for a month that's full-time, great. But you've got to make essentially three months' pay to to fill up your funnel and, and, and deal with that. So it's just not at the same scale. I think that the uh, fundamental underlying issue here is that uh, gig workers, as you say, they should be paid 15, 20 bucks an hour after expenses accounting for time spent servicing the platform. And that includes the time driving from dropping off one patron to, to picking up the next. Yeah, um, I think now I Uber think is doing that. They, they, they pay for that time, but I don't think they pay for the wait time. And there's a minimum now uh, with the 50 cents an hour or whatever, uh, 50 cents a mile fees. So I don't think you're correct in that they're making under what would be minimum wage in any case, because how, why would millions of people then choose those jobs, David, if there are so many other jobs that are looking? Like, why would you choose to do this D if there are not. so many out this there? Is, this, is, this is disparation. When you have some, it's kind of like, why would anyone ever get a payday loan? You know what the interest rates are in payday loans? They're outrageous. Why would anyone ever do it? This is a multi-billion dollar industry. When you have an asset like a car and you need cash, sometimes you will look at that equation and go, do you know what? It may be I'm deferring maintenance. It may be I'm running down my asset, but that's tomorrow. Today, I need 80 bucks. So I'm going to drive for Uber or Lyft or DoorDash, even if on the long or scale- Or all three. I mean, they're, most yeah, people are using three. multiple. Yeah. Or, or, and, and then on the long scale, I'm not going to make any money, but the long scale just doesn't matter. Tomorrow matters. Paying the bill that's due now matters. Uh, picking up groceries matter. And this is kind of the or, or preying on the precarious that I find just so disappointing. And I find it doubly disappointing because I remember when Uber first came out and it was essentially- uh, black cars, yep. right? Uh, uh, and and I thought like, wow, what a great idea! And awesome. this was a yep. relatively expensive service um, because it is relatively expensive to have a private chauffeur, right? This is the other illusion we have here: is that like suddenly everyone could afford to have private sh chauffeurs, private shoppers doing all this work for them, while those workers were being well paid, and the companies turned into multi-billion-dollar companies. No. No, mm. society didn't just fundamentally change in any of those ways such that we could all enjoy an army of servants. Um, so I think that there's just there's some fundamentals here that are uncomfortable. I think these companies are continuing to be unprofitable because the real product that they have 
for example, getting chauffeured around is a high-end luxury product that people just can't afford at the scale of, of its current use. That maybe there's a great Uber that's a $2 billion company or an $800 million company or be whatever careful. the size a, of the I still industry have a large was for black caps. Be, be careful with the valuation talk, David. I still have a big piece of that company. <laughs> Let's not run down the valuation just yet, okay? <laughs> well, I think this is exactly why I need to talk about it, right? Because I don't have yeah. a piece of any of these companies, which is yeah. why I talk about valuations in, in general, because I yeah. think they're, they're really important. And it's really important to well, examine who owns these companies, who funds them, and, and, and look at like how does that maybe bias their view on, on whether we should have a, a broad social net and whether companies should be required to hire people as employees. Um, these well, are I mean, the conversations the, we the, have to The to argument, have. I think, for um, low prices for Ubers is that it gives... Uh, back to the discussion about you know people having access to stuff, it gives a larger group of people access to actually get a ride when they need one, right? If, yes. if you, I lived in Brooklyn in the boroughs, you couldn't get a taxi. You know, you might be able to get what they called a gypsy cab back in the day. You pay somebody under the books in an illegal car three or four bucks to take you somewhere. And and Uber does provide a really safer, much safer, tracked, uh, you know, down to the millisecond like where the car is. Um, and vetted approach than those cabs, right? And so that was progress well, in my mind. Yeah, maybe, right? You saw the Uber safety report, what, 2,000 rapes in a year? Well, I mean, like you have to understand the denominator or... on these as well. I mean, the yeah, denominator yeah, no, no, the, the is the giant. They did 1.7 right? billion rides in a quarter. So sure. I think, just, and, just they're, let, and they're let's releasing not pretend, it. Let's just not pretend that they've solved the inherent safety issue that is getting into a stranger's personal car. Right, they have it. Yeah. Right, maybe but they they've made it better. much safer. And I don't even they... want to argue that point because I think I, I, right. <laughs> I think they've made Uber, it. I think it made it much Uber safer than a, a cab. Better, Uber is a better product in the user experience. Yeah, in user experience, there's and no safer. doubt you about You admit that, it's right? safer, right? Maybe. I mean, it, it has I, I, I'm to be not safer. If that point, but I would put because that one aside. here's the thing: it, it has to be safer because you know exactly where the cab is at every point, and you have the the credit card number of the passenger. So for both parties, you have their entire history of where they've taken people and you have the minute by minute location, second by second location of the car. With a cab, you know, you could have any, people used to share licenses in the yellow cabs and they could drive anywhere and they're not tracked. And there's no central dispatch tracking it in real time where you can press the safety button and say, there's a problem. Sure. On remediation, on yeah. following up if there was a uh, great investigation into these claims, you would have more data, no doubt about yeah. it. One of the key problems with Uber and other platforms is they've been very reluctant to do that. Not only have they been reluctant to do that, they've been actively interfering in investigations. One of the main scandals that came out before Uber went public was when one of the senior executives went to India to essentially, what, get the medical records on a rape victim there because it was looking bad. I think it's just, this story is very much muddy on whether yeah, I think that, safety that, is actually There's better. been some regime change there. 